Hey everyone, Pastor Tommy McMurtry here again with another video debunking dispensationalism. This particular video it is about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Now I personally believe that the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are one and the same as well as most dispensationalists believe that, but there is a wing of dispensationalists that teach that these are two different kingdoms. Now, while I believe that's a very foolish teaching that is easily debunked with Scripture, even though they have a lot of different arguments that we don't have time to go into, but they are very simple to shoot down with just a little bit of Scripture. But let me just show you one example out of many examples showing the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are one and the same, and that they are used interchangeably in the Bible. In Matthew 4, 17, it says, From that time began to, uh, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mark 1, 14, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. That's just one example where they are used interchangeably, and that is done many times in the gospel because they are one and the same. Yet there are people who are desperate to separate these two things. And I'm going to tell you there's a reason they are desperate to separate these two things, and that is because it is absolutely necessary if you are going to hang on to a pre-trib and a pro-Jew position, you have to separate the kingdoms. Now, I, do, I agree with most dispensationalists that it's foolish to do that, that it's very clear that they are one and the same. But yet, I'm going to show you in this video why you either have to separate them or you have to keep them one. In the, if you keep them one and the same, it means that your pre trip position and your pro Jew position is just dead wrong. There is a reason people are so desperate and will make some of the foolish arguments that they make to claim there are two different kingdoms, just like they claim there are three different Gospels. See, dividing the kingdoms is an example of what happens when a person's desperate because you back them into a corner. All right, what is the kingdom of heaven and what is the kingdom of God? People will normally tell you that they are the same, all right? And normally you would think that too. That's not true. In the Bible, the kingdom of God is very different from the kingdom of heaven. All right. And when someone tells you the kingdom of heaven is not the kingdom of God, then just ask them, well, does the kingdom of heaven belong to God? Because if it does belong to God, then it's safe to say it's the kingdom of God, since it's his. It is very foolish to try to separate these things, but I'm telling you, people do. And when you back them in the corner, they often go to their slogans and they'll, they'll say things like, things that are different are not the same. And one of the examples they'll give is the fact that they're called by different names proves they are not the same. Is there a difference? Is it right to teach that they're the same thing? Or, in fact, are they two different things? Well, they're definitely not spelled the same. <laughs> You've got the kingdom of God, that's, that's one thing, the kingdom of heaven. So it sounds like there's two different ones because there are two different <clears throat> words to describe them. But that's just foolish because many people in the Bible were called by different names. Peter was called by different names. Sometimes he was called Cephas. You know, sometimes he was called Simon Barjona. He had many different names. It doesn't mean he was multiple people. We see that uh, there, were, there are many places that often had more than one name. A place where Jesus died, Calvary, Golgotha. Sometimes it was given other languages. Sometimes people gave names for different reasons, different meanings. But at the same time, it's still one and the same. And people often, too, you know, when they go to their things that are different are not the same, that's how they separate the raptures and how they separate the Gospels. But there can be different descriptions of the same thing. And it's fine as long as they don't contradict each other. If someone were to see me committing a crime and they were to tell the police, I saw a guy wearing a blue shirt and a blue tie with comb over hair, he's the one that did it. And then another man comes along and says, yeah, I saw it too. He was wearing a blue shirt and a blue tie, comb over hair and a beard. Now he gave a different description, but the police aren't going to walk away and say, oh, obviously that's not the guy because things that are different are not the same. No, those descriptions will work because they don't conflict with each other. And there is no conflict between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, even though many people say there are, but there's not. So why is this a big deal? Well, I'll tell you why it's a big deal. Because John 3, verse 5, 
Jesus said, uh, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You say, why is that a problem? Here's why it's a problem, because the people who are separating the kingdoms, they teach that the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, but the kingdom of heaven is an earthly kingdom that's for the Jews. So this is something very important to know. Where you're going to see right here that the kingdom of God, you can see that it's mainly focused on Christians. You see that? And then the kingdom of heaven, it's mainly focused on Jews. And we have a huge problem because if they are the same, Jesus told Nicodemus, a Jew, that he cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Now, why can't he enter if he, unless he has been born again? 1 Corinthians 15, 50 tells us, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. We can't go into the kingdom of God in this vile body. That body of ours, it's got to be changed. In verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And we all know that happens at the rapture. What is happening? What, what is this change? It says in verse 42, it says, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Those who are going to inherit the kingdom of God are going to be those with the spiritual body. And so to say that a group of people, just because of their bloodline, is going to receive a kingdom, and it goes totally against what Jesus told Nicodemus, a Jew, but yet pretty much all dispensationalists will agree that the kingdom of heaven or the millennial kingdom is for the Jews. So this is where doctrine becomes important. Whenever you see a certain doctrine that talks about the kingdom of heaven and it seems like you can lose your salvation, then, or it talks about tribulation end times, you already know what it's mainly for, right? You see that? Jews, not to save Christians. I'm sorry. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's for those who have a spiritual body. See, 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, I believe that the millennial kingdom is a literal kingdom here on this earth, but I believe those who inherit that kingdom are going to be those who have a spiritual body like Jesus Christ. A spiritual body that was able to be felt. The disciples felt him. They saw him. They touched him. Jesus even ate. But that was a spiritual body, and the Bible says we're going to have a body like that when Jesus Christ returns. And the Bible is very clear that we are the ones that are going to inherit that kingdom. We are the ones who are going to reign in the millennium. It says in 2 Timothy 2.11, It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So right there, very clear, we are the ones who are going to reign with Christ. And once again, if you're going to have the kingdoms all one, you have a huge problem. It, this is going to destroy your pre-trib teaching. It's going to destroy your pro uh, Jew teaching because of the fact flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, we also see who it is that reigns with Christ in the kingdom. Let's look at who reigns with Christ in his kingdom. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Those who didn't take the mark of the beast, they are the ones who reign with Christ a thousand years. And you say, well, that's the Jews. Well, let's keep reading. 
Verse 5, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Talking about the people who live and reign with Christ a thousand years, the people who didn't take the mark, they are the ones who rise in the first resurrection, not the one that comes after the millennium. Verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So it's very clear that the first resurrection happens after the mark of the beast, and it happens before the millennial reign, and those who take part in the first resurrection are the ones who reign with Christ. And who takes part in the first resurrection? Well, 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We rise before the lost. There are lost people who are dead. They are going to rise someday, but they're not going to rise until after the millennium. We rise first. And that right there proves that, one, the rapture comes after the mark of the beast, and it also lines up and it proves who it is that reigns with Christ in the kingdom, who the kingdom belongs to, who the kingdom on earth, that the dispensation was called the kingdom of heaven, the ones who are, receive that kingdom and reign with Christ are those who are saved. It's the dead in Christ. That is us. And it is time for dispensationalists to get over this obsession that they have with a race of people. And the kingdom of heaven is very clearly a reference to the physical kingdom on the earth. You see, way back when, when the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, he promised him physical land okay and his descendants abraham and his descendants now those descendants you can be born in with a spirit of adoption that's true as a christian today but the promise that god made to abraham is still there for his physical descendants with the jewish people the promises that god made to israel are going to be fulfilled in the ones that he promised them to those who were of faith to abraham's seed not according to the flesh, but those who are of faith, the children of promise, as Isaac was, and we are those people. And so I hope this will be very clear. You say, well, I don't like this. You know, this is just going to push me more to dispensationalism. Well, you know what? Then great. It's time we separate the sheep from the goats when it comes to this subject. There's many people out there. There's a lot of false prophets that are teaching a lot of this stuff, and there's a lot of great heresy that goes into dispensationalism. And it's time for Baptists to stop taking this half-in, half-out approach when it comes to dispensationalism, using the arguments when you need them, but throwing them out when it's going to make you look bad. If you're going to be consistent if you're, and call yourself a dispensationalist, you have to believe in the two kingdoms. But the truth is, most of you are right. There is only one kingdom, and therefore, that's going to hurt, that's going to hurt your theology when it comes to the Jews. So I hope this was a help to you. Thank you so much for watching.